with with their product that they've built in Node, and you know this thing and this thing and this thing. And it's just like it's it's very overwhelming. Uh, yeah. A lot more than I've I've heard about, and I, I, I'm just I don't know. It's it's just shocking. It, well, the community is very respectful and professional. We really enjoyed meeting a lot of the people here. We haven't talked to all the companies. We talked to some, most of them. Um, just great, great crowd. I mean, I mean, good people doing some great work, and the apps are going to change, hopefully, society and make the world a better place and make them do more uh, with more resources and less, less cost. So it's a huge, huge win. I think just the beginning. I guess my final question will be to you is, what's next in your mind, the vision of Node, and as this ecosystem starting to develop out and, and flourish, uh, further, what's next for Node? So it, we're, we're very much focused on growing the community and uh, making sure that, that the experience for people coming into Node is, 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 is a good one. And for a long time, uh, growing the community meant making Node itself better, like fixing bugs and fixing performance and, and, and making sure that you know, it compiles on Windows, it, it runs on Windows. Um, those were those were our bottlenecks for a while, but now actually it's it's running pretty well. It runs on Windows. We have installers for Macintosh, right? You can go to the website, you can download it. That's no longer our bottleneck. What our bottleneck is is bringing in all the third-party modules and like br building a website where people can go to Node and discover everything, uh, all, all of the, the various modules that, that you can just kind of plug into your app. We have over 6,000 modules now for Node, and it's becoming a real problem that people come to it and they're like, oh, I need to connect to MySQL. There's 20 options. Like, am I going to sit down and evaluate all of these code bases? Um, no, you need some sort of rating system. You need some sort of way of, of showing people what is the best one, what's the up and coming one, you know, which ones are total shit and you should not use. And, and we just need to make that all very, very clear to people immediately. And that's what we're not doing a good job at right now, and that's what we'll be working on. Well, we'll certainly help you get the word out and anything you need from Silicon Angle. We're uh, looking forward to working with you guys with DevOps Angle. We're going to cover you guys and be part of that community. We love it. Great uh, success. We're here inside the Cube. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com with Clint Finley and Ryan Dahl, the uh, uh, creator of Node.js, huge momentum, great success, a lot of value, great performance, and uh, we're excited uh, to be here at Node Summit live in San Francisco. So we'll be right back with more interviews in five minutes. The Cube is this conceptual box, if you will, and we bring people inside of the Cube and then we share ideas, but those ideas don't stay inside the Cube. We explode that idea. We allow that idea to grow and grow, and it does. So we really try to own the whole enterprise technology space. I mean, that's what we're all about. We take analysis, we take publishing, we take news, and we take live TV, and we combine it together in a product and share that with our community. No one's doing what we're doing. Uh, what we're doing, in my opinion, is the future of media, future of television, future of the internet. Video is an amazing, powerful product. So we work in what John and I talk about as a data model. People always say to us, well, how do you guys make money? We sell knowledge, we sell information, we sell data. So the problem that we are that we identified is about what we call big, fast, total data. Anybody can analyze a gigabyte of data. 
If you do a thousand gigabytes, that's a terabyte of data. You take a thousand terabytes, that's a petabyte of data. A thousand petabytes, that's a zettabyte of data. So you are talking big data, lots and lots of data, and can you analyze it in real time as it comes in, right? The Cube is like we call ESPN of tech because we want to cover technology like ESPN covers sports. John has a great vision for what's going to happen next in tech. And so John is sort of that alter ego of mine that lets me see the future. with us. Michael Sean Wright, Mark Hopkins, you know, we've got Kiem here today. We've got a team of people on our news desk uh, run by Kristen Nicole. So she has a team that helped feed us the news of the day, what's happening, the analysis. We have a team of analysts and they feed us information about what's happening. And then really importantly, we have a community, a big community of, of many hundreds of contributors. We love technology, we love we love the innovation, and that's what we do. We want to create a great user experience. And in order to do that properly, you've got to really, really prepare. The Cube for the past year that we've been in operation has been very, very successful. And uh, you know, companies do pay us to come here. I think the companies who bring us in with the Cube get two things. They get a third-party independent resource to provide knowledge to their audience who are seeking it, this demand for the, for the product, and also complements their existing media. Uh, we're here at an event and uh, you know, the company has their own TV organization and they have to pay a premium for that. So we complement that by offering a objective, organic, third-party, independent analysis of the event. That's why the top executives come in here. Cube is a comfortable place. It's a place where people feel happy and are happy to share their knowledge with the world. And uh, we're happy to, to be ambassadors of, of that knowledge transfer. My entire career has been really built on relationships and talking to people and extracting knowledge from people, largely in a belly-to-belly -belly private forum. What the Cube does is it explodes that to a huge audience. I mean, we've reached millions with the Cube, and it's real time, it's live TV, so you've got to be quick on your feet, but you learn very fast, and then you iterate from that learning. So John and I play off of that, and we're constantly trying to up our game. Okay, we're back inside the Cube live in San Francisco, California at Node Summit here. Day two, Node Jam, all the startups are out there talking to the investors and the crowd, showing them their apps built on Node. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, and this is the Cube. This is where we broadcast live. I'm here with Ben Lowenstein and uh, Robert De Dafus. Dafus. If you're a hockey player, you'll know the name, played for the Sharks, came from Canada. Uh, as you said earlier. Yes. Okay, and, um, and what's your company name? So we are Colingo. Colingo. 
Not to be confused with Kalinga, which is the town on uh, Route 101. No, that would definitely you know. be unfortunate. <laughs> okay, so welcome to theCUBE, guys. So what's the vibe here? Tell us what you guys are doing here and uh, your, your product and company. Absolutely. Um, so we are Colingo and we are solving the problem of intermediate English learners worldwide. And this is a problem that's not well understood here in the U.S. But this is not like you or I who needs to go and learn the basics of French because we want to go out to a nice dinner and impress someone. Or you know, we want to know a little bit of Italian for the trip that we have to Italy. We're dealing with people who need English because it makes the difference of getting the job or not getting the job, of being able to seize opportunities or not seizing opportunities. And so we have a real-time online tutoring marketplace where learners can come and we match them up with tutors for very advanced, very focused language tutoring sessions that get straight to the bottom of the problems that prevent them from being fluent. So honestly, we're huge, we have a project we're working on called Silicon Academy, which is kind of like our open source projects, just getting off the ground. Um, we know about Khan Academy, we hear about Code Academy, just got funding. Um, so online learning is changing. This isn't just like online course where it's a, a different paradigm of, of learning. So is that where you guys are going in here and how does the product work? Do people opt in? Is it crowdsourced? How is, how is your... Uh, platform uh, working. Absolutely, so we're really focused on how we can take uh, someone from the United States, an average American who has one thing that really matters to learners abroad, which is the intuitive ability to listen and to help someone practice their English, and matching them with our tool set and our technology that enables them to become a really great language tutor and to be able from the comfort of their home with basically no experience to be an awesome tutor that can really help a learner get to the very specific problems that prevent them from fluency. So is it, it's a marketplace, that's so right. that, that's the primary business model, so you have to match you know, buyers and sellers, all that good stuff, yep. kind of like you know, match.com uh, for, for English. But, so there's some tech involved, right? You're dealing with yeah. video, you're dealing with audio. Yeah, we're actually dealing with audio, and uh, Robert can talk more about that, our director of engineering. Yeah, so Node was an obvious choice for this project because it's very real-time based. There's a lot of interaction going on. When that le learner is on the system with the tutor, there's a lot of information going back and forth. Node was an obvious choice for that. And we we're also dependent on some third-party APIs such as Twilio. Um, so Node is really good for kind of sitting in the middle of all this stuff going on in real time. So what about video? Is there video involved? Not at the moment, there's not, no. Just audio? Yes. Yeah. So is it a window with chat and video? Yeah, so actually we also leverage Skype in this because Skype is a great communications channel. So the learner and the tutor are actually connected over Skype. But once that happens, you know, that just kind of sits in the background and then they go over to their browsers and the actual lesson, the actual conversation itself, all that value happens in the browser. So we had Voxer on earlier. They're doing a lot of that, you know, the, the instant messaging with the voice. We asked them about Skype. And so what, what does it work, what does it mean to work with Skype? Is, to my knowledge, Skype doesn't really deal with Node. Mm. Or Skype just, or you wrapping around Skype? How, does, how are you handling the Skype thing? Exactly, we're doing what you just said, we wrap around Skype, so Skype has released, it's in a beta phase, um, essentially a runtime where you can build your own UI around Skype, and we are leveraging that in our system. And it was just a natural choice, like I said, to use Skype, because they do have some great features in their network that we don't really have to worry about. You know, they just deliver a good, good, qual good call. Great, so where are you guys now? Tell us about the company status. Uh, funded, angel funded, not funded, looking for funding. How many people? Sure. What do you, where are you guys at? Uh, so we're three people right now. My co-founder, Lee Jacobs, uh, myself, and Robert, uh, full-time. We're looking to hire one more. That's actually why we're here at Node Conference. And if there's anyone in this audience that is a Node developer and would like to come work on some awesome, awesome challenges, please get in touch with so us. So we were talking last night about this person you're trying to hire. It's a, it's a tough hire, right? Yeah. It's a JavaScript person. Yeah. Just describe the person you're looking for. So we're really looking for someone who has the ability to think in an architectural sense about Node, who wants to take Node from kind of a basic hacking on it, we can make something work application, to an application that's really well structured, well tested, something that's very smooth, very robust, and can link in with a lot of the external APIs such as Skype that we're working with. So where are you guys at with the product now? Is it is it actually working with some folks using it or is it still being developed? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're in a private beta right now and we actually have people who are using the product coming back every day, loving the experience. We're keeping things very small at the moment. We're gradually scaling them up as we fine tune the core interactions and the core principles involved. How many people are using it in the private beta? Um, so it's pretty small right now. I'd have to check the exact numbers as of today because we just Hundreds, launched two tens, weeks ago. So. Tens, hundreds, thousands? In the smaller range of that. Smaller range, okay, got it. Yeah, so you're controlled beta. Yeah. 
or in a controlled yeah. beta. But you know, one of the exciting things is uh, you know thinking about distribution and thinking about how easy it is to scale a solution when you have all the core components of this right. So the VCs here, I so, saw. You know, obviously Charles is running around checking everyone out. Mm -hmm. Insuk Ray is here from Rembrandt. Have you guys talked to some investors at all? And what's the what's the feeling from investors? Yeah, uh, Charles is a great guy. I had a lot of good conversations with him so far. Um, and in general, yeah, we. Um, um, we are in execution mode at the moment, and we are really looking to go ahead and prove out a lot of the, the key concepts that we're working on. And you're based here? Uh, yeah, we're based here in San Francisco. And you're looking for someone, that person, to be in San Francisco? That's right. Okay, so anyone in uh, San Francisco Bay Area, you want to come join these guys, it's a great app, and I gotta say, the whole learning transformation paradigm is completely up in the air right now. It's a great environment to innovate. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Khan Academy, huge fan of, of Code Academy. We have a Silicon Academy project, which is just now uh, getting up and online, not really online, but going. We're getting some support for it, but uh, it's huge, and, and, and it's changing the game, and the learning environment will be, as Mark Hopkins and I talk about, very Xbox-like, mm -hmm. um, where it's going to be a lot of interaction, a lot of real-time data, very gamification-oriented, cool things like that. So I think you guys got a good, good opportunity. Hope you can find that person. Yeah, I mean, myself as well, and you know, it's really the opportunity to take code, to take Node, and make something that's going to work for the two billion people that are learning English over the next 10 years. The get numbers that, are just staggering. Get that product out the door. Ben, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Pleasure, Don. We'll be right back with a few more interviews in five minutes. A uh, few minutes, not five, a few, and uh, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's live streaming television show. We're here in San Francisco at the first Node Summit. And I've got with me two guys who are uh, really key in the Node community. I've got Daniel Shaw, who is uh, runs the Node Ups, at, or uh, actually, what is it called? It's just NodeUp? So NodeUp is a podcast, NodeUp.com, at NodeUp on Twitter. And um, the NodeUp Live is something we organized right before Node Summit. Okay, and we also have Chris Williams, who's the organizer of JSConf, which was the event that, uh, as Ryan Dahl told us earlier, is the place that uh, Node, uh, Node.js basically launched. And uh, Chris also... Uh, is involved in a startup. I think it's probably the coolest startup I've seen here. It's called... Oh, you're being too kind. Uh, Thank you, though. I definitely appreciate uh, that. For those of uh, you who are aging voting. Aging safely? Moving. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Dan also works at uh, Voxer, which right. is you know a, a big Node.js uh, adopter. We had interviewed Matt Ramey earlier. Uh, so w where do you guys... Uh, Think that the Node community is going. I mean, it, it's grown. It's grown incredibly uh, quickly. I mean, is, is it a sustainable growth? Is it in danger of of growing too fast? It's uh, you know, it's we're, we're at uh, a real sweet spot right now, where it's small, close knit, and everybody knows each other. Uh, we're definitely going to be going across the threshold in the next year or so where we're bigger than the, the, the group of people that, that are, you know, you can keep into your, your social group. So it's going to be a real challenge for us. We're, it's something that, that a lot of us are thinking about and that we discussed uh, uh, at length at uh, summer camp last, last year. Um, we're concerned about it and doing our best to, you know, be inclusive and, and you know, make everybody feel at home in the no community. Chris? So uh, I kind of have, have a bit of a different perspective, and, and by no means is that contrarian, or am I trying to be contrarian? Um, my, my background is mainly from different languages, using JavaScript in different ways, and the general broader JavaScript language itself. I have a concern that I, I voice sometimes, sometimes louder than others, that the rapid growth may actually be the downfall of Node, as well as also the benefit. Um, you saw it a bit with Rails as it rapidly grew and it became, it became the monster that it actually was trying to combat. And right. I worry that Node will just, if it doesn't learn from the mistakes of previous communities, it's doomed to repeat it. Um, we see trends in computing programming where the new shiny thing lasts for maybe seven years and by that seventh year, a new, new shiny thing. And in this case, it's Node and eventually it'll be something else. Uh, I think that the best thing the Node community could do, those of you at home, would be to actually look at arguments that the Scala community, the Erlang community, the uh, Python community, the Ruby community, are making against Node, and instead of fighting it with, oh, you, you're wrong, um, try to understand the argument, embrace it, figure out if there's a solution and a path that can work or if it's just a complete troll argument and just ignore it. Um, I worry that the hype actually ends up hurting Node on both sides, because there's a lot of negative hype as well as also positive hype. And if we could figure out as programmers how to just be programmers and not be Rubyists or Node people, um, I think we'd all be happier. And I think uh, there's been a lot of talk here about polyglots, but seriously, it's right tool, right task. Node can't solve everything. Um, it just can't. I mean, I, do you disagree? Or? I don't disagree. No, I, oh, okay. uh, no, I, I, I totally agree. And and uh, you know, the the lessons of Rails and you know its meteoric rise and and how it you know became a little bit too clickish, maybe. Um, you know, want to try to you know avoid having that in in Node, and that's that's it's a challenge. I mean. The, the there's a there's a, a large segment of the Node community that's here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I don't know if like, someone coming from outside of San Francisco, you get a sense that like all the cool kids are here, and then there is that sense. Right. I, yeah, so you know, I moved out here uh, at the beginning of this year mm -hmm. because um, I really was excited about programming Node, and I was working uh, programming Java, and I wanted to uh, program Node, you know, as my as my day job. And San Francisco 
uh, you know, a year ago was the only place that you could really do it and you know make a real career out of it. Um, that's starting to change now. There, there are lots of great opportunities all over the world, mm. but I, I, I very much see that there's, um, you know, it's still San Francisco centric, and there's you know a lot of core that's here. Well, I, I think that maybe it's that a lot of companies are doing it, but not as public, right? Um, which is part of growing up. It's uh, people don't want to put out that they're using it yet because it's a, is this going to succeed? We don't want to necessarily be the ones out on the forefront and get cut by the razor, but we want to be out at the forefront so that way when it stabilizes, we're right there and we're kicking right. butt. Um, I know that I live in D.C., so I'm about as far from San Francisco as I think you can get in the United States, and uh, it's a different culture. We're still dealing with large enterprise government contracts that demand Java, and so in some realms, it's a different type of world, but by no means does that limit you. I know just through the Node Jam, there was at least four companies out of DC right. that are doing all Node-based programming, which is really cool to see. Right. Maybe not all, but hybrids of Node and other languages. Yeah, I, I, there was actually an impressive percentage of companies in Node Jam that are not from San Francisco. You know, there's this core group of, of the <laughs> Node uh, community that's, that's here in San Francisco. But you know, as as Node Jam demonstrates, you know, it's getting adoption all over the United States. And you know, uh, I was in Italy over Christmas and you know got to go meet the guys at, at the uh, the Rome Node. Uh, Meetup group, and you know they're they're trying their best to uh, bring Node and, and explore Node. You know they're going against the grain with this. You know uh, for them it's a really really new technology. You know in, uh, in, here in San Francisco, you know we we've, we've kind of accepted Node and it's quote unquote proven. Um, they're you know just trying to introduce it at their jobs and justify. Um, you know, using Node as, uh, uh, on their products. Now, when you say proven, proven, do like, you want to put that in like quotes? No, no, like proven, like uh, thumbs proven up. That, okay. Proven, as in uh, you know, Voxer has uh, millions of users every day that you know run on top of Node. But it's not just Node; it's also running on C. You guys are doing nope. libpcap work. No, no, no. Okay, it's Node. It's Node. We are, we are Node, Redis. And React. So Redis and, is, and React is Erlang. Right. So we have the so you, you those have data a, stores. I mean, you have we, different. You, we, we can't. Got a stack. Right. We have a stack. We we can't. No, there's no sane way we can do uh, a database. Mm -hmm. And you know the only insane person is uh, Tim Caswell uh, doing you know a database in Node. He is. Um, quite I would deep. love. To, I would love to uh, be, you know, purely in Node with a database. But you know the right tools for the job. Right. I'm. I only wanted to put the air quotes on just because we're at arguably an infancy in the language. Right. There are things that could pop up that just because we haven't tread through the woods Absolutely. in these pieces. Um, maybe it's just my cynical view, but mm -hmm. uh, we still find security holes all over the place in V8. Right. Uh, not even in Node. Not anything that Node could do. But because we rely on all these different pieces. I always get worried when we jump to proven uh, so quickly. And I'm not saying it, right, right. it might not end up being that way, but I just I try to make everyone be a little bit right precautious. Uh, I think that you know a solid architectural way going forward. We put a lot of effort you into you know making Node work, and like we're um, you know pushing so much data that we we found um, you know edges in. In, in flaws inside of Node that you don't you, you wouldn't expose in an Express app, mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting you know a, a few million hits uh, a day. But you know, if you're doing you know massive amounts of data um, all concurrently, uh, it stresses the the language and, and we, you know we we found issues with uh, buffers and inside of Node that that basically would not have been exposed in, unless it was at that scale. So I run into different sort of things. I'm trying to scale down. No. So Node won't compile on smaller chipsets. Oh, right. Uh, and more oh. arguably fringe, but as ARM chipsets become more and more popular, right. it's more and more critical. Um, right. So that's why, just to put the air quotes around, proven, proven <laughs> means everywhere all the time. And, right on. Okay. Uh, air quote <laughs> proven just means 
we're Air using quotes. it and right. uh, it's, it's you know we, we we're haven't using changed it and our we haven't yet. we haven't gone crazy <laughs> uh, i don't think i don't think any language uh closure right. included at this point you could say that it's a proven language it might be proven in some cases but not all cases right. um or well scala has been around for a bit but there's some, there's one of the benefits of having years underneath your belt right. uh, Absolutely. JavaScript, the language has those years, uh, which is a, ben a huge benefit for Node, but we still find things that are edge cases and crazy. I'd like you to get back to community. Uh, oh, I yeah, guess. sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's no problem. Uh, one thing that you know it keeps coming up when we talk about the, the Java, uh, the uh, the Node.js community is how inclusive it is. Uh, it, but you know it, it, and as you said, that that might become more difficult as it grows. Right. But how do, how do you? Uh, accomplish that like what how could another open source uh, community uh, w you know what, what what's your advice to another community to to, to achieve what node.js has maybe not in terms of the speed of growth but in the uh, inclusivity of it I don't know. I'm just remembering that everyone uh, matters and they have a um, their point of view is you know a solid contribution and like we're as a as a language and a community so young, you know, someone who's old in the community is like two years. You know, it, it, that's not that that long. So you know, people coming in and approaching new things, doing different things with Node, have new and useful uh, perspectives that uh, you know we need to to keep in mind. And you know, we might be in some subset or some corner of Node that really works for what we're working on right now. Um, but the fact that, that people are doing, using it in, in different ways makes the entire community richer and you know, makes the, the language stronger and helps us find you know, bugs that, that what we're, we're, we've been working on, that little like, segment of it that we're, we're working on, you know, is not necessarily going to stress as much. Right. And the JavaScript community is, it, it, it seems pretty similar, uh, a pretty yeah, big umbrella, um, uh, inclusive, but it's been around longer, it's been growing, growing sort longer. Sort of. So. We've, had, we've had like ebbs and flows. So sure. you had yeah. Ajax experience during sort of the bubble and the AXHR giddiness. And, uh, my wife and I started JSConf uh, uh, four years ago. And one of the things that we tried to do in building JSConf was keep things small and intimate. If you actually know somebody face to face and have had a shared experience with them, you're less likely to be like, that guy is a, a, some nasty word, um, or be very aggressive in a response. It, it's, there's a human, as long as you remember there's a human, we find that community works a lot better. Um, we've, we've, every year we've tried different things, and I, I think for any other language, keeping the intimacy, the, the meeting every person, the connection, and then also having some deeper beliefs that are just beyond programming. Um, when we do JSConf, we try to make it a family event. And, and by that, I mean, you don't leave going, that was a good event. You leave going, I made some really deep friendships here. And, uh, you know, I may not see them until I come to San Francisco once a year, but I could call up anyone and be like, hey, can I crash at your place? And they'd be fine with that. Um, so we try to make it come in together. And I know other communities are doing that. And it's all in sort of picking the right values, I'd say. Uh, and which seems weird. It seems like that shouldn't be in the tech sphere, but it really does matter. So like JSConf, we run the budget to zero, and whatever money we don't spend at the conference, we donate back. Um, we donated last year uh, at the, and announced it at JSConf uh, over $3,000 to gender and racial diversity outreach programs. And that sets the right tone for the community, that we want to change the lack of gender and racial diversity but it's not something that you can just do overnight. It's something that's going to take a long period of time. So we want to get started changing future generations now. And something else you do that impressed me is you have the significant other track. We do. So, so that you know, when you come to the, the conference, you're not just leaving your, your spouse or your partner mm -hmm. at home, or you're not just leaving them at the hotel either. This comes from it being a husband and wife team that puts it on. <laughs> uh, my wife is awesome. and. We came, I went to a conference in Toronto, it was uh, Ruby Fringe, and they actually had it. So I get no credit for coming up with the idea. It changes the whole dynamic. If you're a male or a female at a conference, there's a general tendency to go out drinking and, and maybe networking a little bit too much. Um, whereas if your spouse is there, 
it keeps it at sort of a professional level, which is very nice. And um, they are happy because they're doing stuff. They're not cooped up in the room. And it really keeps that whole family sense back in the conference. And so I encourage anyone who's running a conference to do to consider doing a significant other track. So it's an idea. Run with it. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say to the JavaScript community, the Node.js community, or or about the, the communities? Um, so there's something you know we're we're uh, going to be exploring uh, doing the, the live Node up uh, a little bit more, uh, looking for some venues. Uh, we might do something at South by Southwest, uh, and maybe try to do something in Europe later this year. Uh, if you're interested in sort of helping and doing that, uh, you know Linux Live is just us going out and sharing and, and talking to the community. It's not, you know, anything, it's it's a very, you know, grassroots like a low level. Like a public forum, like town hall meetings? It's not a thing. public forum. It's, you know, it's a group gathering. You know, some, something we have in San Francisco is almost every night there's a some sort of a tech event and it's in an office somewhere and, you know, there's a lot of uh, speaking and you know, what we really enjoy most is getting together and geeking out and talking about what we're working on and sharing ideas. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that we want to share. And that's one of the things we try to share with, with the podcast. And, um, you know, uh, another thing with, with NodeUp, if uh, you have ideas for, we, we've been doing deep dives. We did a deep dive on NPM. We did a deep dive on database. If there are topics that you... Uh, Want to um, want us to cover? Um, definitely, you know, at, uh, note up and uh, you know, send those our way. We look forward to, to exploring some of those more. Okay, Chris. Uh, if you're listening at home or watching at home, uh, before you go posting anything on the internet, just think. Take two seconds. Think: Is this negative? Am I being a little bit over? Breaching, and that applies for all technology communities. I made a big call at JSConf EU this year to try to change our our mode of operation. There's a, a negative bias that permeates every single media channel in, in the whole technology sphere. And it's a lot of bitter infighting. And it, it really doesn't help anything. Um, if, if somebody comes at you, try to take a step back, see what the problem is. Don't go immediately throwing back spears and knives. And don't go plus oneing onto piles that, that really, you know, maybe two people should just have it out, not have the audience or the arena of people cheering them on. Um, if we could do that, I think the whole technology field as as a total group could be a lot happier and a lot better place. So. Great. Well, thanks a lot, guys. We're Thank going you. to take thanks a break, and then we're going to do a wrap-up. All right. Thank, Thank you. The Cube is this conceptual box, if you will, and we bring people inside of the Cube and then we share ideas, but those ideas don't stay inside the Cube. We explode that idea. We allow that idea to grow and grow, and it does. So we really try to own the whole enterprise technology space. I mean, that's what we're all about. We take analysis, we take publishing, we take news, and we take live TV, and we combine it together in a product and share that with our community. No one's doing what we're doing. Uh, what we're doing, in my opinion, is the future of media, future of television, future of the internet. Video is an amazing, powerful product. So we work in what John and I talk about as a data model. People always say to us, well, how do you guys make money? 
We sell knowledge. We sell information. We sell data. So the problem that we are that we identified is about what we call big, fast, total data. Anybody can analyze a gigabyte of data. If you do a thousand gigabytes, that's a terabyte of data. You take a thousand terabytes, that's a petabyte of data. A thousand petabytes, that's a zettabyte of data. So you are talking big data, lots and lots of data, and can you analyze it in real time as it comes in, right? The Cube is like we call ESPN of tech because we want to cover technology like ESPN covers sports. John has a great vision for what's going to happen next in tech. And so John is sort of that alter ego of mine that lets me see the future. We have a really amazing team of people that work with us. Michael Sean Wright, Mark Hopkins, you know, we've got Kim here today. We've got a team of people on our news desk uh, run by Kristen Nicole. So she has a team that help feed us the news of the day, what's happening, the analysis. We have a team of analysts, and they feed us information about what's happening. And then, really importantly, we have a community, a big community of, of many hundreds of contributors. We love technology, we love, we love the innovation, and that's what we do. We want to create a great user experience. And in order to do that properly, you've got to really, really prepare. The Cube for the past year that we've been in operation has been very, very successful. And uh, you know, companies do pay us to come here. I think the companies who have bring us in with the Cube get two things. They get a third party independent resource to provide knowledge to their audience who are seeking it. There's demand for the, for the product. And also complements their existing media. Uh, we're here at an event and uh, you know, the, the company has their own TV organization and they have to pay a premium for that. So we complement that by offering a objective, organic, third party, independent analysis of the event. That's why the top executives come in here. The Cube is a comfortable place. It's a place where people feel happy and are happy to share their knowledge with the world. And uh, we're happy to, to be ambassadors of, of that knowledge transfer. My entire career has been really built on relationships and talking to people and extracting knowledge from people, largely in a belly-to-belly -belly private forum. What theCUBE does is it explodes that to a huge audience. I mean, we've reached millions with theCUBE, and it's real time, it's live TV, so you've got to be quick on your feet, but you learn very fast, and then you iterate from that learning. So John and I play off of that, and we're constantly trying to up our game. Okay, we're back, day two of Node Summit live in San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier, and this is theCUBE, our final wrap-up session with the Silicon Angle crew, Alex Williams and Clint Finley. Um, Want to just say thanks to all you folks watching out there, Mark Hopkins and Kean for producing. Uh, great job. Uh, we're at the end of our broadcast here at theCUBE, and Node Summit has been an amazing uh, experience uh, for me, and uh, learned a lot, met a lot of new people, uh, understood a lot more about the community and the capabilities of Node.js, which is, this is what it's all about. Node Summit is the inaugural conference for the Node community. And, uh, Alice and Clint, let's just kind of wrap this up. Let's kind of put a bow on this uh, event here. And, and what did we learn? I mean, I, you know, I, I learned, you know, I'll start. I mean, I learned that Node is a lot more real and legit and high performance than I thought it was. And I kind of did my homework, 
you know, I was excited by the possibilities of it, um, but I really loved how, how legit it is. And, and uh, one of my comments in an earlier cube was, uh, uh, I'd categorize this as a hurricane four, uh, category four hurricane, mainly because some tiles are falling off the building roofs, trees are coming down, so there's some disruption in the technical theater and the business theater. And you're seeing that here. You're seeing VCs here, funding companies, a lot of startups, and the geeks. Um, so it's legit. What, what are you guys learning? Let's talk about what we've learned. Clint? I, I think what, uh, what I saw that, that's sticking with me the most is that there are some uh, pretty serious unresolved controversies in, uh, in, in the way Node relates to other technologies. Uh, uh, talking to Node skeptics, there's a lot of discussion of things like Java's Netty framework, uh, Python's Twisted framework, or the capabilities that are in the programming language Erlang. And uh, some people say, well, Node does certain things better than those, or that you can do certain things easier in Node than you can do it do with those. But on the, there's other people who say, well, no, that's not true. You could just you could totally do something so much easier in Twisted than you could in in Node. Um, and I, I haven't seen any resolution to that. So I, I guess maybe that's a cop out of this. I didn't really learn something that was in an particular. Maybe that was an observation. A, um, I think that speaks to the community too. It's a very young community. And the, the people here, a lot of them are very innovative. And, and the, the level of sophistication I saw in the startups was, was much greater than I've seen in other, you know, in other events that I've been where there's been startup competitions. And so that's encouraging. Um, I think that there's just going to have to be some maturing in like how these front end, really these front end developers for the most part, interact with the bat, you know, and learn more about those about the systems behind it. Sure, but there were, there were some people here who, uh, you know, they weren't front end developers. They were, they were, were back end developers who just saw the the potential to to use uh, uh, to do something really simple were, in JavaScript. To for sure, but I think that you know, I think that there's this there is this perception of like it's real time capabilities and you know ability to do so much so easily uh, but there's not that deeper understanding of the of the systems behind it well, I mean, I think that's with Theo's, uh, Schlossenegger's view that the operation side is a lot bit different from the software side, which is the programming side. But, but it's clear to me, though, Alex, on that point, that there is some advantages, real advantage, and we're seeing the demos here and the actual products where Very Node is so. specifically a benefit, like Voxer. We're seeing yes. some of the, the companies upstairs handling the chat stuff. There's some specific product benefits that are actually right. realized today. Right. Um, so, yes. you know, the question of how that affects ops and the scale point is a whole nother conversation. Right. I think that's worth watching. And I learned, that was my, one of my big learning points was, this, it's great on that side, the DevOps side, the programming, the rapid iteration, the agile programming, all that stuff, ain't that goes on in, in open source and commercialization of these kinds of products. But in the real world, in these big enterprises, and these big service providers, there's a real ops issue around systems performance that is a whole nother league of its own. So I think that's something that I learned that, that that it's actually pretty obvious when you think about it, but it's clear that there's two two worlds. Um, so it's that was interesting. But I, I, there's some things that I really find quite compelling about you know about what we're seeing again, those real time capabilities, um, the the way that platforms are emerging for you know delivering messages. You know that, for instance, you know to multiplayer, multi MMO, what was it called? Multiplayer games. Um, and how those are, you know, and, and how those, there's kind of like this ecosystem emerging that's, that's building very, very quickly. And, you know, Stephen O'Grady was saying on, on theCUBE earlier today that he's never seen anything grow as quickly as Node.js has. And he says he's never seen um, a technology go into the trough of disillusionment so fast. And he thinks that's where we are now, and he's just not uncertain if it's been if it's been spit out the other side, and now it's going to really gain mainstream acceptance, but I think the chances are that it will. That came up, that came up a lot actually, the, the, the excitement of Node, but also the fear, if you will, around the hype. Or, or is it overhyped? Yeah. I mean, it's legitimate in my mind, so I just want to make that clear. I do not think it's hyped up. However, given all the activity, 
it could be misconstrued as super hyped. But so that's where I think I, I, I kind of felt and, and heard specifically that, you know, wondering and we had a getting ahead of our skis, as, a, as Charles Beeler said, and some other folks. So that's interesting. And it, 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 growing so fast, you know, it's still young. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think where it's going to be resilient is, is in its community. And yeah. That, and that's been really clear is that there's a community that's uh, like paradoxically tight knit but really inclusive. Uh, so you know everybody knows everybody knows each other, but they they also make a, a good effort to bring in people, and it, and that's going to be hard to maintain that that level of inclusiveness as as the community grows. But having that having that com- that community uh, movement. Is, is what's going to keep Node around. It's what's going to keep Node improving. Uh, the, we, uh, we didn't get uh, Isaac on, the guy that created uh, the Node package manager, but that's a, a big part of Node is how, it, how you can extend it with, the, with, with add-ons and modules. Uh, you know, it's, it's a platform, so there's, you know, there's other things. There's Express, there's Socket.io. There's, so there's, you know, there's all this value being created. It's, it, it's a lot like Hadoop, like, I, when we talked yeah, about. I, mean, I, think, I think, John, you said it last night. Like, this is, the Web 2.0 era is, is essentially passed, and now we're entering a new era, and Node really is, rep, Node.js is representative of that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, what Ajax was always kind of like, oh, Ajax-y kind of things on Web 2.0, but actually, Web 2.0 never really materialized, in my mind, at least. And you can see that with, you know, what's happened with some of the websites that cover Web 2.0. They kind of turn into more about Google, Apple, and whatever. But, like, I think this is really about what Web 2.0 is about because you're talking about web apps. And mobile amplifies the value when you see that kind of performance around the I.O. Um, so I'm, I'm excited. And I think, you know, on the community side, what I... Uh, learned, and I think this was kind of how we branded it in, in our conversation earlier, is that the community I would is, is, has been described here in the Cube as respectful and professional. So to me, I think really my observation of the community is it's young, still close-knit, but what's really Im- impressive to me, Clint and Alex, is that it's respectful and professional. Yeah. And that's going to do really good justice for those guys as they start to reach out, as we heard in the last panel, around working with other open yeah. source projects. Mm-hmm. And it's a very open collaborative approach, very socially integrated, but I like that professionalism. It's a, it's a breath of fresh air, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so that's going to be a big plus for them. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, one of the things that's so, you know, so refreshing here is you do see, you see the power of the ecosystem in terms of the services that people are using, you know, and, and how that's helping really, helping Node.js grow. For instance, GitHub, I think GitHub's a real kind of catalyst, you know, for, for the growth of Node.js. In other ways too, but you know, we have, the, the, the device market has just exploded, right? And there's all types of different services you can use to either build apps, so that's, you know, that, that, that market where we're going to start to see rapid you know, the rapid capability to build applications is really, I think, going to fire this up. Big data, mobile, all those trends are really coming together at a, at a great time. We'll just have to see how big this event is next year. Yeah, I mean, the other things that I observed and uh, learned and, uh, you know, watched is uh, the, the systems architectures is a mindset. We've heard that over and over again, that Node is a mindset. You know, the browser, HTTP, uh, is first class citizens, or some quotes. So you got that notion that you got some more systems capabilities with Node. That was impressive. It, it made me think more about those systems challenges that Theo Schlossnager pointed out. Um, and the other thing that I uh, observed or watched and learned here was the uh, entrepreneurial activity. So. Um, and there's two points to that. One is there's a lot of entrepreneurs here who are really doing some coding, doing some good work. The Node Jam here on day two is tons of startups, bootstrapped, and that highlights the value proposition of cloud computing. You know, low cost to get into the market, and they could rapidly develop and get something out there that's functional and can deliver value. Yes. So I, I'm really impressed with that. Yeah. That being said, I do not think that there's a lot of companies here that are, that are venture backable. I'll tell you yeah. why. A lot of the companies here look like features and they don't look like a real company in my mind in terms of the classic venture capital. So I think traditional venture will reject most of these companies. Instead, the angel market is so robust now with Y Combinator and AngelList, they're all viable under seed and angel funding because the VCs can let those accelerators do the work. On, but the on VCs that. are struggling with this because 
you know, we were talking about it earlier, you know, yesterday, and they understand that the cost to actually develop apps is so far less, yeah. and they don't need that much capital, but their funds are not really designed, are not, not structured. I got some email, I, I got some emails from some VC friends who knew watching the program, and uh, you know, they always watch the cube, but the comment to me was off the record, uh, and I won't name the source of the VC, was uh, I won't fund any of those companies there. Um, what I'll do is I'll let the angel guys, angel list and Y Combinator, vet them out for me. I found that very interesting, but I think that's consistent around some of the other VCs I talked to. But i tell you what's good about all this. One, there's a lot of angel capital out there through AngelList and Y Combinator, so it doesn't cost that much to get these teams formed. However, I think you're going to see more failure than successes, and I think that's actually going to be a good thing. I'll tell you why. This community is so respectful and professional, I think you'll see companies get formed out of those failures. Yes. Mm -hmm. Better companies, because of the experimentation and the tinkering of Node will create more skills and create, I think, derivative ventures where people will find each other out in the community. Yeah, well there's there's another possible scenario there in, in terms of the venture funding and, and how it could play out though. Uh, you know, we've been seeing a lot more uh, of what people are calling uh, uh, talent acquisitions. I, I forget the, the sort of uh, funny buzzword uh, portmanteau of it, uh, acqui hire, acqui hire, <laughs> yeah, and I think that could be what you see a lot of here because you yeah. said a lot of these look like features. Uh, Web 2.0 went through a lot of that too. Yeah. What, really, what they were doing was they were building something that they wanted to sell to Google. Yeah, and uh, I, I I don't know that a lot of these these guys here are are saying, well, I want this is a feature I want to sell to to Google or Microsoft, but that's still I, I think uh, a a pretty likely outcome for or some just, of these Or things. just frank, frankly, just talent. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Salesforce.com is growing like crazy through their acquisitions. Yeah, they, they want the talent you know. or they want some of the IP, you know, or, you know, yeah. just one particular feature. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I think A lot I think of companies right that will, like, won't have a chance to fail because somebody will want to buy them for some for some other reason. And we know, we know how... It's so hard to hire right I mean, now. This, oh, yeah, look, look, at how Twitter, look how Twitter was formed. Twitter was formed because of Evan Williams' failure with Odium, right? And they right. get kicking around. Oh, so guessing. I think when you have these emerging environments where you have these communities, the cross-pollination around the entrepreneurs will be really important. So I think that's what I'm interested in watching as well, is uh, I think failure is not bad here because there's so much skill acquisition that these developers are getting through Node that no matter what their outcome is on their venture, they're going to be viable in any way, whether they go work for a big company or where they hook up with another entrepreneur and do something bigger. So I think the yeah. market will play that out. You know, and I, and I just think my, my final takeaway here is like, this is such a refreshing event. I mean, it's so invigorating to see these people, the really young people developing really amazing stuff. And that, that, that's really what, you know, what it's about, just to be, you know, to, to, to see something and to, ha to have it thought through in whole new dimensions. That is, that is the true essence of innovation. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I would just say in, in, in closing, this is a great event, great technology. Uh, one of the most exciting moments as an, as an aside this week uh, here was the fact that we launched DevOps Angle. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So for the folks out there, Alex and Clint have been launching these vertical publications. First one was uh, Services Angle, uh, and the diamond sponsor there is EMC, and that's all about the services and the systems and the critical infrastructure around you know, big enterprise. And this week we launched DevOps Angle, which is all about the emerging cloud, Node.js, these emerging communities that really are going to make a difference in rapid application development. And I couldn't be more pleased, guys, than the validation that we got from Dell. Yes. So Dell, Can I show my t-shirt here? De you show the t-shirt. There we oh. go. Thank you, Dell. Dell. Thank you very Dell much. Dell Computer <laughs> has stepped up to be the diamond <laughs> sponsor for DevOpsAngle.com, a new publication within the SiliconANGLE network. And so Alex and Clint will be doing double time between DevOps Angle and Services Angle. So we'll have the ops world covered and the dev world covered like a blanket. So look for all the coverage on Services Angle and DevOps and Angle. And please reach out to us if you're interested in writing you know, about DevOps or if you're interested in writing about this whole new world of services. We're, we're actively looking for people, either yeah. as contributors or even as writers who we hire on a part-time yeah. basis. We'd like to add more sponsors to it. We're going to do it very much like the NASCAR logo, like the events, you know, platinum sponsor, gold, silver, 
and then we have um, special sponsorships for startups. So um, that helps us build this great content and hire more people. And of course, the Cube. We'd love to go to the events, and we're going to—you'll see us more this year at a lot of events. Our next event is coming up at the O'Reilly Strata Conference, and that's going to be really a great show because that really continues this conversation about DevOps and cloud with big data. And that is all coming together. It's a beautiful world. It's a great time, guys. It's, uh, you know, we've been doing cloud mobile social for a few years now and everything's coming right into our wheelhouse and uh, it's very exciting times to Silicon Angle. So, well, thank uh, you very much, John. This has been, yeah. it's great to, to be part of this, this group. Great. Yeah, thanks, John. Thanks, Keenan and Mark. Yeah, They're thanks, Keenan. On Kenan. the other side of the cameras all day, every day. All right, and thank you guys for watching. All the readers out there, siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv. You'll see all the reruns on siliconangle.tv. There'll be a channel for uh, there for uh, Node, and uh, we'll advertise that on Twitter. Stay tuned, and if you want more on Twitter, go to Node Summit as the hashtag, and we'll be communicating on that in the back channel um, and uh, publishing more and more content every day. So that's a wrap from uh, Node Summit, it's live in San Francisco. The innovative Node.js is off off the platform, taking flight, Node Summit is coming to an end, and thanks for watching.